let's look at the Contact Us page. Okay, so first I'm gonna run through for our local business Contact Us page, and then we will do the online store Contact Us page. With a local business, as I mentioned when you were doing the business directories, you also want to have your business name, address, and your local phone number, if possible, on the Contact Us page. So this is the information that you're putting in all of the business directories. It needs to be the same on every business directory. But this information also needs to be on your Contact Us page so that Google can compare the information you've put in the directories to the information that's on your website. And apparently, according to everybody who's supposedly in the know, <laughs> they use the data from your Contact Us page. The other thing I would recommend adding into your Contact Us page is your Google Map. So if we go to my Fruitful Online website, so this is my previous website where I was actually targeting uh, Brisbane initially when I used to live in Brisbane and, and then I was targeting the Sunshine Coast for where I live now. So this was set up as a local business website to try and target people in my local area. And you'll see that I've got Fruitful Online SEO. I've got like my address on there. And then I have a mobile phone number because I don't have like a landline phone number. But if you had like a landline phone number that had your local area code in it, then that can certainly help as well. And then if you scroll down, you'll see that there's a, a Google map as well. The other thing that you can put in your Contact Us page is any social profiles that people might use to contact you with. So for me over here, I have some of my YouTube channels and then I've also got links to my other social media accounts on here. Now these bits here aren't you know, critical for SEO. However, you know, it could be critical to your business if you want people to contact you on specific things. And I see, <laughs> I still haven't even removed Google Plus, even though Google Plus no longer actually exists. <laughs> so need to do that. Now there's a thing called schema, and this is where I'm gonna get like a little bit technical, but schema having like what they call like a schema markup, uh, is something that's supposed to help local businesses and it's something that you can put on your contact us page so I'm just going to show you sort of what it looks like so if I come into the back end of my website where this bit is and then I click on there to edit it and it would look like this the visual bit let's get rid of Google Plus and if we go into the text section this all this stuff here is called the schema so it's got like class organization name and then it's got um, down here like class street address etc etc so I got a web developer to do that for me because coding is not my thing I don't have a coding background and so I wanted to make sure that it was like done correctly but saying that I have plenty of businesses that have been on the first page of Google for ages, sort of before any of this schema stuff became important. And they rank number one, no problem whatsoever. And I've never implemented this schema on their site because of the way that their website is coded. And so there's never been any problem. So I don't, I can't say to you that there's definitely a massive advantage of putting the schema in compared to just having it there. If you, if you don't have your phone, like your, oh, what did I do there? <laughs> if you don't have your business name, address and phone number on your contact us page, then, then that's going to definitely have a big impact on SEO. Whether you then go and get the schema put into it, I don't know whether that's gonna have a massive extra benefit over just having it there in the first place. But hey, any little extra bits can help. So if you have a web developer, doesn't charge you a fortune <laughs> for doing things, then you could ask them to do it. Otherwise, there is information here if you're kind of techie and like that sort of thing, where you can go to Google and you can find out exactly what kind of 
data that is, what kind of schema code that you need to put in there for a local business website. There's also um, a newer WordPress plugin, which I believe helps you with this. Uh, and on your Yoast SEO, there's like a paid version that helps you with this. So, you know, that could be an option as well if that's something that you want to pursue. But like I said, the key critical thing is to make sure you actually just have that there in the first place. The number of websites that I go to where it's not in this content of the page. Yes, you might have your phone number up here. Yes, you might have, you know, your address or phone numbers or whatever down here. But, but where, Google, where Google has said it's important and that's like really annoying on my site how it does that that's why I'm changing over <laughs> where it says it's really important is in like the content of the page itself okay so let's have a look at an online store contact us page so with an online store it's a lot more difficult to get yourself listed in business directories it's not a major strategy for an online store unless you actually have a physical address if you have a physical address and a physical premises then again, having your address, local phone number and a map on there is going to be really important because you're going to have your business name as well. However, if you're like a purely online store, you don't have your address on there at all or a phone number because nobody ever comes to visit you at your location, then you still want to make sure you're going to have your business name and your social profiles on your contact us page. So in practice, uh, if I go to my particular website, it's not technically like an online store because it's more of an affiliate site, but I'm still gonna have my, my business name on the contact us page. Obviously I wanna have like contact forms, that kind of goes without saying on the contact page. And then if you wanted to, you could have links to your social media where you want people to contact you. So for me on my personality types website, if anyone wants to talk to me or ask me questions, they're gonna do it through my YouTube channel over here. So they can definitely connect there on YouTube as well. So my new website, is largehope.com so I'm transitioning from fruitful online over to largehope.com and this is different now because in the past I was targeting people who searched SEO Brisbane or SEO Sunshine Coast but I'm not anymore so my new website is something that people from anywhere in the world will be able to use the products and services so my new website is really like a, a virtual uh, products and services website so I'm no longer interested in having my contact information. And like I said before, with respect to say my address and phone number, because it's no longer relevant because I, I don't need to do stacks of business directories in order to rank this kind of website. And so on this kind of website, I'm still going to have my business name there, contact form, and then various ways that people can connect with me and ask questions. So what I want you to do now is go to your website, have a look at the contact us page. Are you a local business where you where people are going to search for whatever services you provide and and the location, then you need to definitely have that on your website. Are you an online store? Do you actually have your business name? on the contact us page have you got social profiles there where people can connect to you and contact you through those means if that's something that you want to encourage people to do mm -hmm.